Sometimes, one of the trickiest merchandising tasks is just finding space available on the sales floor for our products. Aisle layouts are a tremendous help, but since it's our usual policy to keep the shelves fully stocked, you may sometimes find that space allotted for one item is filled with something else. The layout says this should go here, but there's no room. What do I do? Making space to display all the items we sell isn't always easy. It can require some ingenuity on your part. Frequently, you'll have to rearrange merchandise in an area to make the space you need. Begin by tightening everything already on the shelf. There should be no empty spaces between or behind merchandise. We can't sell empty space. That gives me a little more room, but I need more. Now what? An easy way to make space is to remove duplicate stacks of a particular item. So if you've got two stacks of an item, pull one out. You need to ensure merchandise is given the correct number of facings. Facings refers to the number of stacks or peg hooks of an item's merchandised on the sales floor. This Fisher Price item has two facings. This Fisher Price item has just one facing. The price label on the item tells you the required number of facings. Use any extra pieces to fill existing stacks or put them on the gondola overstock shelf for later use. Now that helps. I'm really on a roll. Look for boxes that are placed long ways on the shelf. Turn them so the short end faces out and you're freed up even more space. Remember to condense and tighten merchandise as you go. What about these few pieces? They're taking up an awful lot of room. When an item sells down on the sales floor and you've determined there's no more in stock, take the remaining few pieces and place them on the top of a stack of similar size merchandise. Be certain the lower item has a duplicate stack nearby. This is called underbasing. If you come across partial stacks of several similar size items and there is no more in stock, combine them into a single stack. This is called shuffling. This mixed stack of merchandise should be placed on the prime selling shelf directly below the overstock shelf to maximize its visibility. All the techniques we just discussed are what we refer to as condensing. The same principles apply to peg merchandise. If there are duplicate items on two or more peg hooks, remove the merchandise from one to make room for a different item. Put as many of the extra pieces on existing pegs as possible but don't overstuff the peg. Extras may have to be repacked. Only pieces of the same item can be repacked together with a maximum of 24 pieces to a box. A detailed repack slip must be filled out and must include manufacturer name and number, skin, retail price, and a description of the item and total number of pieces repacked. Repacking should be done only with the approval of store management or a department head, and it requires their signature on the repack slip. The repack is to be kept in the storeroom. Always use repacks first when pulling merchandise to the sales floor. That damaged skateboard will never sell. Neither will that pair of skates in the open box, and both are taking up space on the shelf. That's a good observation. Items that are open or torn should be repaired with tape, if possible or they should be taken to the rewrap area in the rear of the store for repair. Collect damaged items from the sales floor and take them to the service area. We call these items RGD, Return Goods Defective. You'll need to fill out the appropriate RGD slip at the service area. I did it. I created a lot more space for more items. Good work. Making room for merchandise can be a challenge. So here are a few helpful hints to keep in mind when you need to create additional space. Tighten and condense merchandise. Remove duplicate stacks or pegs if necessary. Turn boxes so they take up less space. Shuffle or underbase items when only a few pieces remain on the shelf. Remove damaged items or those with packaging you cannot repair.
Toys R Us stores sell a tremendous volume of merchandise each day. As our customers load up their shopping carts, stock levels on the sales floor naturally go down. When an item sells down, that is, gets low, it should be replenished as soon as possible. Restocking the sales floor is an ongoing process. Depending on their popularity, some items sell more quickly than others. These hot sellers need more attention to ensure there's always stock on the sales floor. When you're restocking shelves, first use any loose individual pieces that may have been placed on the gondola overstock shelf to fill empty spaces. If an item is really low, full cartons of merchandise should be pulled from the storeroom. Check the price on the goods to ensure they match those already on the sales floor. Sometimes, an item will arrive that is not already merchandised on the sales floor. It may be a new product, or one we're out of. Once you've determined from the aisle layout where the item belongs, and you've made space for it, you're ready to begin the stocking process. Lay out a pattern with the item. Place one box on the shelf facing out, even with the front edge of the shelf. Then, lay as many boxes deep as you can to fill the shelf. Fill any leftover space at the back of the shelf by standing pieces on end. In the upper right-hand corner of the price label is a number that tells you how many facings a particular product requires. Facings refer to the required number of stacks or peg hooks of an item on the sales floor. If two facings are called for, a duplicate stack is required. If three facings are needed, make three stacks. Once the pattern is set, fill in the space with the product. Keep price labels visible to the customer, if at all possible. As you can see by now, we have our own language and techniques when it comes to merchandising. Let's take a look at some more important techniques we use when stocking shelves. For example, striping. That means having two or more facings of the same item lined up vertically, one below the other. Blocking simply means grouping a category of merchandise together vertically. This lets our customers see where one type of merchandise ends and another begins. For example, Mattel items are blocked here and Lash are blocked next to the Fisher Price items. In addition, high dollar or more expensive items should be placed at eye level in plain view of the customer. Some items may be faced, that is, the larger side, which usually has a color picture of the product, is visible to the customer. Larger boxed items are usually stacked on the bottom, or base shelf, of the gondola. Pay close attention to these larger items, because when just one piece sells, it can create a large hole. Sometimes, we merchandise larger boxed items by a means called bulk stacking. A bulk section generally has no shelving and allows for a larger quantity of these boxes to be stacked to a height of 6 foot 6 inches. An optional bridge shelf can be added. Now, what about leftover items? If the sales floor is fully stocked, then extra pieces can be stored on the gondola overstock shelf. The top one, up there. To take more advantage of the overstock shelf, full cartons should be zipped open and placed on the shelf. A carton is zipped when one side is cut away to expose the merchandise inside, making a much more eye-pleasing merchandise display. Loose pieces should go on the top of any zipped cartons. For safety reasons, weight sets, skates, in general, anything heavy should not be put on the overstock shelf. If possible, do place mostly slow-selling merchandise on the overstocks. If an item is hot, you don't want to put a carton up on the overstock, then have to bring it back down to fill a shelf later the same day. And it's always important to keep work areas neat and free from boxes, trash, and supplies which might block the path of the customer. Keep all boxes to one side of the aisle when working. As you can see, keeping our shelves fully stocked is high priority. No stock on the sales floor, our customers can't purchase the items they want. We need to merchandise our products in a way that is appealing to our customer and maximizes every square inch of available space.